on, I'm smiling. This, uh, this is back to not the very beginning of detailing for me, but pretty darn close to it. Uh, I'll spare you the long story. I've told this a hundred times, but uh, this goes back to uh, just after I learned how to use a clay bar. I learned what a clay bar was. So this is, I learned about clay bar in 2002 um, from, uh, from now long time detail events here in, uh, in uh, the Orlando area. He clay barred my S2000. And, uh, and then after that, it sort of sent me on a search for stuff. And that's when I discovered the Griot's Garage catalog. My goal was to buy every single thing in the catalog. I bought all the tchotchkes, I bought everything. So this goes back to their Polish 1, 2, 3, 4 system that didn't really work. Uh, but it was, um, uh, I thought I was doing something. I was moving some polish around. I had a Griot's Gen 1 polisher. And so I've been a, a Richard Griot fan uh, for many, many years. And I've been after them for ever since I started this. I finally feel like I have enough pull uh, where I convinced uh, 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 Richard Griot's son, Nick. I got on the phone with Nick and said, look, here's my vision. Um, and, uh, and so he, uh, he let me in, he let me into the club. Uh, and so these are the Griot's products. I'm gonna go through each one of these here today with you. These are the ones that um, I still would still use or still use. Um, I'm excited to sort of bring some of their new products and bring back some old products that I've been using for a long time back into my process. Uh, and I uh, wanted to share with you what, uh, what we're doing here and what, we've, what I've chosen to, uh, to add to the mix. Uh, these will replace, some are new products, some are replacement products um, to replace um, you know, some of the other, other things that I, I think you know, Grios, Grios does a little better job at. Uh, and so uh, let's go through it. Um, I think let's go right to, let's start here and I'll kind of work my way around. So engine cleaner. This isn't something I think you absolutely have to have, uh, but uh, I've always liked having a dedicated product that has, has some formulation or has the design to work in the engine bay on the various plastics. So my guess is this is some version of, a, of an all-purpose cleaner with some decreasing capabilities. Uh, and so I like that this, uh, Griot's formulated this many, many years ago. I, I'm sure there's been some iterations, but uh, this probably harkens back to the original engine cleaner formula. I always had great success with it. I feel like it foams up okay. If I wanted to throw it in the foam cannon, uh, I'll usually use it in a spray bottle. I like to have a gallon of this. Uh, and I think that uh, having this dedicated degreasing, the, the get dedicated degreasing capabilities of this, uh, of course you can always just use an all-purpose cleaner or regular, you know, like I'll use GSF if the engine bay isn't super, uh, uh, super gunky. But like on my Evo, I'm gonna use this, it's gonna do really well. I have a lot of over spray of that gunk from underneath the car. So I'll do an engine bay cleaning after I, you know, after I get this thing um, ready to go to polish and all of that. And so dedicated engine cleaner, you are, I have many, many videos on the channel. Just search, click the little, little magnifying glass and click engine bay cleaning and you'll see me cleaning m3s and there's probably 30 videos of me doing various engine bay cleanings in my detail process so i'm happy to have a dedicated engine bay cleaner um, apart from my normal uh, all-purpose cleaner that i would normally use or use for the last several years then we have uh, interior cleaner this i think is the best product that richard griot makes or the griot's garage team makes um, there's nothing in this there's no scent there's no dye, there's no color, there's no nothing. And the beauty of this has always been that it leaves an extreme matte finish. Um, I do like the PNS interior cleaner a lot. I feel like it leaves a very similar finish to this, uh, but it has color and scent to it. Um, and so this I think is a level up because of that. Um, I've, I've, uh, this is the one product I feel like I've been chasing something else because I couldn't get the Griot's product. And so this is the one product where I feel like I'm out of integrity with you all in that I've always said that I'm selling the stuff that I am using and like the most. Uh, and this is the one that I feel like I, I, I'm missing and have been missing for quite some time. Uh, and so I'm most excited to have interior cleaner. I think you want a gallon of both engine cleaner, engine, uh, interior cleaner. Uh, we are also selling the, you know, the one liter, or I guess it's a 35 ounce uh, Griot's bottle with the finest sprayer. Uh, and then the long-term plan is to hopefully, you know, sell you a press all as well. And then you can have all matching press all bottles and interior cleaner that says, you know, the product in it. So I'm working on that. 
Uh, this is a new product to the lineup, uh, so this isn't replacing anything. Uh, you, many of you have used this before, or have heard me talking about it, or have seen me using this with uh, Billy down at Presidential. Um, this is Griot's, I believe, their best uh, um, polish. Back in the day, they had polish one, two, three, four, and the methodology was to go start at polish four, then try polish three, and then try polish two, and then polish one, and then work your way back up, one, two, three. It was terrible. It took forever to wipe off, didn't do very well. Um, it goes back to the old days of polishing and um, you know, some of the newer tech. Uh, this, I think, is a, is a product that, uh, that Jeff Brown came and developed uh, when he joined Griot's and then brought you know, the, 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 the sort of the pro line or the prosumer line of products as part of the boss system. Uh, and this stuff is, I think, one of the most amazing polishes ever. Uh, I, I don't use it all the time. You know, I, th I, I think that this is a little bit more aggressive than the Jess car that I love so much, uh, but I will use it if I, I feel like I need a cut, a uh, solid cut, and, uh, and the beauty of it is there's virtually zero dust, super clean, smells good, nice to work with. Uh, it's a really, really great, dust like zero. Like even Sonex Perfect Finish dust way more than this. Uh, and I, I don't think you need a gallon of this, but for some of you pros that support me and want to buy from me, uh, um, we do. We, I do stock. We'll probably keep a half a dozen or a dozen gallons in stock. Um, I'm never going to buy a gallon. What I'd be worried about is buying this big expensive gallon and not using it all, uh, and it, you know, kind of going bad over time. I'm not sure what the shelf life would be. It's probably in years. But if you're in a normal garage and you have cold and hot and cold. Temperature changes, drastic temperature changes throughout the year. <coughs> I would highly suggest not buying a gallon. Just buy it in the what size are these? 16 ounces. Uh, I love their system, their their top uh, as well for application. So uh, one of the things that I've always admired so much about Grias Garage that no one else has seemed to do is they made their own bottles. They um, they didn't make their. I don't think they made these gallons. These J handles are pretty readily available. Uh, but they made their own sprayer, they made their own bottles, they've made their own squeeze bottle type product, uh, they made their own spouts, uh, they made their own version of, of polishers. Uh, and so what a lot of detailing brands tend to do is they just buy what's available because it's really expensive, it's really difficult to come up with something. And then you have to learn the hard way of what products work in this type of PET plastic bottle. Um, you'll notice some of their like surface foaming stuff, their pre-washes will come in a, a different you know, type of like HPDE material. So, um, you know, they, they've, they've had to develop, you know, spouts, applic you know, the sprayers, all kinds of stuff. And that, that to me uh, has been, uh, I think, such an additive to the detailing world uh, and why I've been such an admirer all these years of, of the Griot's brand and that they just, they kind of set their own course. Uh, they're not copying others and what they're doing in, in general. Uh, and so they've uh, been a pioneer on a lot of different you know, product fronts, which I, I really like. So then this is not an absolutely necessary product for your arsenal. Um, I don't really clean pads anymore because my new MO is to sell them on Instagram when I'm done with them as uh, dirty one-use pads. Seems to be doing pretty well. Uh, but when I do clean pads, I, uh, what I've been doing is I, I used to take, um, what was it, uh, Micro Restore, and then I would mix it up. It's just kind of Micro Restore is pretty nasty on your hands. Uh, this works very similarly uh, to Micro Restore on pads, not so much on de as a detergent. I don't like to use this in the washer. I'm actually using rags to riches in the washer. Uh, but I have uh, a gallon of this uh, and I'll have this like underneath my sink. Uh, and this is what I'll spray on my, on my Rupes pads to uh, clean them. Uh, so I'll use this in combination. If I, my pads are really gunked up, I'd use some Dawn. So I'd use some Dawn first and then follow with this to get all the Dawn surfactant residue residue out of the uh, out of the the, the, uh, the foam pads and microfiber pads uh, but I think having a gallon of this makes sense uh, you would put it in um, they 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 provide it with a with a dispensing top I prefer to put a sprayer on it 
Uh, so I put it in one of the press bottles, I put a sprayer on it, and uh, we, we use this to, uh, I use it to clean pads. Works, works, works extremely well uh, for that application. Again, I, I think you use, sorry to Griot's, but I think Rags to Riches is a superior product from uh, P&S and the rag company uh, to get the modern stuff out of like silicon dioxide type sealants out of the microfiber towel. So I'm still using uh, um, that in uh, the Rags to Riches in my in my you know, laundry when I'm, when I'm washing my flower towels. Then this guy, this is gonna simultaneously make you fall in love and also disappoint you. So I wanna, I wanna preface this. Pretty much all car interior scents, I'm sure there's some that are out there, but they dissipate really quickly. You know, I have the Angel Wax stuff, which I like the Bliss and Eden scents. Um, to me, and this may seem ridiculous, completely worthless, but to me, what I like, I wash my car, I vacuum out the interior, I spritz it with Griot's fine leather interior scent, I just spritz it on the carpet. Or if I, you know, back in the old days, what I would do is I'd take, uh, actually use like a sponge. Now you can get like a color lock sponge, one of the little applicator sponges, soak the sponge down, jam it under the seat, that'll make it last a day, a day and a half. But what I'm looking for in an interior car scent, I told you this is gonna sound ridiculous, Car's clean, spray some in. The first time I get in the car after it's been cleaned, I wanna smell the scent, and then I'm okay with it disappearing after that. <laughs> Told you. So that's what this is. Um, this, and this is my favorite scent of all time. It's, uh, it's called, you know, Griot's Garage Fine Leather. There's just something about it. it just reminds me of detailing, reminds me of clean, reminds me of freshly washed. Like if you, if you gave me this scent and uh, had me smell it and I hadn't touched a car in 20 years, I would still, this takes me back to my day, you know, just any, any car. I can kind of associate all the cars I've had with this scent, the S2000s and, the, and the, uh, even back to RSX Type S uh, that I've been using this product for many, 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 many years. And so I'm happy to have it back and uh, have it in the store and then provide it to you. But I, I don't wanna set you up for disappointment here. I don't wanna be overpowered by the scent in my car. Uh, and really it's a, it's, a cup, it's a couple of day product. Um, now, if you didn't open up the doors, a week later you come back, it, you'll smell it. Um, but once you start driving the car around, the, the scent will go away. Like I said, what you could do is you could grab, get, grab some sort of pad and soak it down, throw it under the seat, that'll help it last longer. Then uh, another product that Griot's has developed, which I'm pretty sure, I don't think I've ever seen this anywhere else, so I'm pretty sure this is their development. Uh, but this is a gallon spout, which I find to be extremely useful. I'm excited to put this on all of my gallons, uh, but you have a spout that opens and closes. Most of the pumps and stuff, even the pumps that you know, Griot's has offered over the years, most of those weren't very good. They'd almost always fail. Um, this is the first gallon type dispensing spout uh, it has an O-ring inside. Uh, I find that uh, works extremely well. Uh, and so I'm gonna have, you know, however many gallons, six or eight gallons of stuff, every one that I can put this on. Uh, it won't fit on like the CarPro gallons or won't fit on, fit on most of the European gallons, but all the, you know, all the stuff that come in the J handle or top handle, like the PNS stuff, it should fit, it should fit on all of, all of those, uh, those gallons. So having this is a little Griot's add-on that I think is pretty cool. Then these guys, man, this reminds me of the old days. So I still have these, you know, I still have some originals in my cabinet. I, sh I wish I'd have brought them here without the little fancy little thing here. So this is a bug sponge. Uh, my process for removing bugs is different than most. Uh, I make sure that I maintain a well or a well-maintained coated vehicle uh, and that coating will usually have a topper on it and then I'll usually use some sort of drying aid. So my methodology in cleaning bugs is to clean the car, you know, wash the car. So actually now it's to pre-rinse the car. So to use a, a snow foam, pre-rinse it. Then I'm going to foam it again and I'm gonna clean the car. I wanna get all the sand, I wanna get all the dirt, I wanna get all the stuff off. Most of the bugs, 98% of the bugs are gonna wipe right off. But those that are stubborn, let's say love bug season or something like that, after the car's clean, then I would take this bug sponge, which has a waffle weave sort of, uh, uh, um, it's still soft, but it's a waffle weave type of, uh, 
whatever, fabric. I'm gonna dunk it in my bucket. Now that there's nothing on the surface, there's no more, because I've already rinsed the car. So I've, I've washed it, rinsed it. Uh, I've gotten all the sand and other things that would scratch it. And then I'll, you know, maybe go after the, the more aggressive bugs, go after the ones on my windshield with this guy. Not aggressively, but, you know, this is quite a bit more um, useful on, on bug guts than a, you know, like a regular, like microfiber madness in credit pad or something like that. So I like to have, not a lot of these, but I think it comes in a two pack. So you just buy a two pack, keep it in your cabinet for a rainy day, whenever you get a situation where the bugs aren't coming off. Off. I don't like using bug removers. I don't want things attacking my paint. I feel like my pre-wash and my regular soap will take care of that. The GSF uh, really won't do much to the, to the bugs, but the, the built hammer stuff that I'm generally using, at least I've been testing, uh, will do a good job of that. But even that, just, just the pressure washer and water will take most of the bugs off of my cars because they're always coated and dialed in. So then something that I, I've been thinking about for a really long time this is one of the most common questions I have at OG is like, what, what, how do I get started in polishing? And um, it's really hard to go the Rupes route. It's hard to go the Merca route. It's hard to go the cordless Milwaukee route if you're just starting out. Uh, it's just too costly, too expensive. I didn't start out with those machines. You know, in, in the early 2000s, if I had to buy a $450 polisher, $500 polisher, I just wouldn't have, I wouldn't have done it. I mean, in the beginning, uh, when I started, there was, I don't think there was a three inch. So I started with a Porter cable uh, in like 2003, maybe 2002. Uh, and then I sort of worked my way up to um, eventually a Griot's Gen 1. Uh, I think I had a Griot's Gen 2 and maybe a Griot's Gen 3. Uh, I'm not sure what generation we're on now with the Boss system. Uh, but the thing that I've been railing against for the last four or five years now has been the IP theft. You know, I'm all for uh, international production of things from all over the place. Um, I'm all for great products. I'm all for, you know, innovation. What I'm not for is just pure IP theft. Uh, and so a lot of the polishers you see on the market, the knockoffs are just a knockoff Rupes. They just went and they copied the, they just do everything wrong. It's just copied wrong. And it's, it, it, it just doesn't make sense to me for the de for, for detailers to, you know, you cut your nose off to spite your face in order to save a few bucks when you're kind of taking from the companies that support us all in this either passion or hobby or career choice. Uh, and so I'm always looking for, if, I w if I'm looking for a, a, a lower cost item, I want it to perform well, but I want there to be some, you know, I want there to be innovation. I want there to be companies that, that put the work in. Uh, and so Grios has done that. And so I have mine here. Um, I'm, I'm almost never going to grab this, in fairness. I'm not going to grab this over a Rupes. I'm not going to grab this over the Milwaukee. Uh, but this is, you know, 200 some odd dollars, the three inch, same thing. So you're, you know, you're almost half the price of a Rupes or, you know, less than half the price of a Milwaukee and you're getting 80, 90% of the performance. The returns become really diminishing. And the thing I like about these machines is that, um, yes, Rupes is the company that went and they sort of brought long throw to the, to the polishing game. That tech, uh, is, you know, Rupes's development. Uh, but, you know, that tech comes into the marketplace and then you have to ask yourself, well, where do you draw the line from a, you know, IP theft perspective? So I'm looking for companies that aren't stealing, I'm looking for companies that are innovating. You know, and so this is a long throw machine. It's a 15 millimeter orbit. I think that's the size you want. Um, but this is a, clearly a bespoke. They're not trying to copy Rupes. It looks different. It feels different. It acts differently. They have a detachable power cord, uh, which Rupes doesn't have, which I think is a real advantage. They have a brush port access. Uh, so you can, the, you know, almost all polishers are, um, are they're not brushless. The, the, the cordless ones are, but the corded ones, there's a brush in there uh, that contacts with the, the moving motor, the stator, uh, the electric motor. Uh, and so there's a port here where you don't have to take the machine apart. You don't have to send it in. They actually send you a couple extra brushes. 
I suspect you're probably not going to need them if you're a DIY or if you're starting out. Um, you could certainly use this in a pro environment as well, um, but you have access to service the machine on your own. You have the normal trigger lock, trigger lock here, which is nice. You have great access to the speed function right at your thumb. Uh, the only thing I don't love about this is I don't like this beginner handle. Uh, I don't think you should be putting your hand on this handle, at least I never do. You're always going to hold the machine this way. Uh, so having this big handle here kind of promotes you holding it, I think, incorrectly. Uh, maybe not incorrectly, but I, I think most you know, pros would prefer you, if, you're, if I was teaching anybody, you're going to hold the machine like so and just get your body into position, change the position of your body so you're not having to kind of reach outside of it. Uh, but the the five inch machine I think is the one to get. So these are the two we're going to carry, uh, and then the three inch, the G13. This does have a little bit of an advantage in that it uh, it does cut quite a bit more. Uh, this is a, a three inch or two inch machine. I'm never going to use two inch on this, um, but um, you're going to use a, a two inch pad or if you wanted to. Uh, and so this is a 13 millimeter orbit, which is preferential because you do get a little bit more work done with a uh, uh, with a, with the smaller three inch machine. The head is nice. Um, they also, you know, Rupe has this design. Their cooling design is very different than Griot's. So notice the shroud is not contacting the pads, the backing plates on these. Uh, and so they don't tend to stall quite as much. Uh, so it requires a little less skill for you to use these as well. Uh, and they'll still, they'll still rotate pretty well, even if you don't have great pad flatness as you're, you're developing your skill set. Um, but these two polishers, I think, are the way to go. Um, I'm not, forgive me to, uh, to my friends at Griot's, I don't like the hybrid polisher. Uh, the hybrid is now a battery powered. I don't like polishers that are, that are um, multi-purpose. I understand when you're starting out, you have this dream that, man, I can just get one, I can get rid of this machine. I can get one inch, two inch, three inch polishing out of one hybrid machine. The problem is, for me, the one inch uh, backing plate, the one inch head, uh, or we are, you, the head of the machine is too big for one inch polishing, and it's too lean and too weak with the battery for three inch polishing. So then I think you end up with a, a machine that isn't really very good at either. Uh, it's kind of like um, I'm a big fan of LEDs in a single color temp. When you get into switchable uh, LEDs, you end up with a you know poor on the, you end up with poor capability on the low end of the color spectrum and on the high end of the color spectrum, and then really poor color accuracy because you're blending two different chips to get a single color rather than having a single chip that's designed to produce, you know, the actual, in this case, 5,000 Kelvin. So same thing in polishing. I don't like the hybrid machines. The PXE80, I, it's a terrible three inch. It's an even worse one inch. Uh, I know that people really like that machine. Um, but right now, the best one inch machine is the Rupes Nano. Uh, I like the Nam Nano Long Neck if I had to choose one. Uh, and it, you know, it, it's got its deficiencies. It does tend to stall a lot, uh, but I want that thing to be as tiny and as compact as possible. That's the whole point of it uh, versus, you know, getting into the place where you have these machines that do, they're, they're trying to do too much. It just ends up being not very good at any of those, those applications. So I get why they have it. it. makes a lot of sense to me why they would produce it and why people would be interested in it, but it's 400 bucks. To me, um, you know, in this place, I would start with this, then I'd get this, then I'd get the Rupes Nano. Uh, don't buy the freaking knockoff nanos, I'm telling you, they're junk. Um, the, you know, we'll leave out the names of the usual suspects, but you all know who they are. You know what you're doing when you're buying those. It just, it just doesn't, doesn't sit right with me. And then the marquee product, the product that Griot's has done that um, I've been biding my time on this, um, but this is their I think their flagship product. Now, I don't have this in the store. We're making this video. Uh, we'll have it in the store in a few weeks. We're still, you know, waiting on stock to show up here. And we have a huge photography transition and everything uh, to make our transition uh, over to the Grios foam cannon. Um, but they put a lot of time, they put a lot of money, put a lot of engineering into this. This is what I've been hoping other manufacturers would do, and they just never have. Uh, and so right now, I think that the Griot's Boss Foam Cannon is the best foam cannon on the market. Um, there's some Chinese, you know, knockoffs that actually, like, like MJCC, I think has done a decent job of not copying and actually trying to make something 
um, unlike the rest of their products or most of their products. Um, but I can't support them because just because they're stealing in other aspects. Uh, and so I'm just not interested in that. This is much better quality anyway. Um, there, the MJCC, from my experience, I've only used it a couple of times, but it aerates too much. It brings in too much air. Uh, this is the perfect combination. So this machine, or this, this particular uh, foam cannon, has a couple of different applications that I haven't really played with uh, other than just the normal usage. Uh, and so I believe the foam cannon comes with a one and, one and a quarter orifice. Um, that's something I have to confirm, but I'm pretty sure it comes with a one and a quarter. You know, Griot's doesn't get into this stuff too much. Uh, oh no, it doesn't. It comes with a 1.1. That's right. So for all of us using Krenzel's AR or stuff like that, you're going to need to swap this out. And so what we're going to do uh, is we're going to offer these. Uh, if you bought a Krenzel and you bought a Krenzel package or an AR package uh, and the Griot's foam cannon comes with it, it's going to come equipped with the appropriate orifice. But just know, I'll make dedicated videos on this, just know <clears throat> you can't just plug this thing in in stock form uh, on a Krenzla, an AR, a Comet, a Active 2.0. Um, you're going to damage the pump over time. A 1.1 millimeter orifice is way too small for application on any professional grade machine. On all your little guys, your Ryobis, your Sunjos, your ARs, all the all the regular consumer, like the Karchers, um, you're, this which is much more common, um, you're going to have, you know, you're going to use the 1.1 millimeter orifice. Uh, and so just keep that in mind when you're considering uh, this, that if you're buying this in stock form, uh, I want to make sure we get you the right, the right um, orifice. I also don't like the plug that comes with this thing. Um, and so generally I'm going to swap it out, but it comes with a plug uh, and comes with, wait a second here, I got to figure this out. Let's look in the manual here. Maybe it does come equipped with a 1.25. Let me look in the manual. This is my first time opening this. Mine that I've had for a while, I stole from Adam LZ. So I haven't made my transition yet. It's funny. <laughs> of course, they show it on the end of a lance. I got to get with them about that. There's going to be some real good synergy between the, our companies over time. So as I was saying, I need to figure out, um, we'll figure out the, the metering system as well. And so this, this does give you some uh, metering options where I have the ability to, so we've got the 1.1 in there. So you've got these metering tips as well that we can use to pull like straight product. Like I could stick this on the, on the engine cleaner and I could choose what kind of, what kind of dilution I wanted. Um, so foam cannon, I've got some work to do. So I'll, uh, I'll follow up with you on that, on, um, on, on digging into how it comes, but we're going to set it up the way you need it. <coughs> so a couple of innovations they've done. One, a much thicker and they were the first ones I think. Maybe not the first, um, but they, they made a bottle that freaking stands up, you know, so it doesn't tip over. So that's important. The other thing that they have is, that's nice is a wide model bottle, wild, wide mouth bottle. Uh, I'm going to talk to Rusky, Rusky let's say uh, a quick disconnect for this. And you can see there's two sets of threads on here. So there's one that would thread right onto a bottle. Uh, and then there's another that threads onto the wide mouth section. I thought that was pretty genius. Stainless steel head. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the knob, uh, but the knob you don't really touch anyway. Turn it up to max and leave it, leave it there. You're never really going to mess with it. They made some innovations to the head. It's a harder, more solid plastic. The top here is more solid. They've also um, done a, a 360. Uh, this is at least 180 degrees, but it's a 360 style. Um, meaning that you could, you could, you could almost take because of the weight, um, you could at times almost turn the bottle upside down. Uh, it, it certainly works 180 degrees. Um, but if you shook it down, you could almost use this thing upside down. I wouldn't recommend it because the water is going to, going to flow out. Uh, but you have a better operation because of the, the tube that's in here, the soft tube. Uh, and then, like I said, you also have the metering option uh, where if you wanted to change the dilution, you can change these, these tips. And so I have to play with that. 
and decide if I want to just use straight soap in my foam cannon uh, or if I want to, um, you know, control the dilution uh, with uh, diluting it, you know, like I normally would. <clears throat> it does have um, a dilution on the, or a, um, a scale on the side. I feel like I wish it was a little bit easier to see like if they screen printed the, the, the meter or the, the, the things on the side. But in general, this thing's pretty sweet. Who knows, maybe someday I can talk them into, we can make a, uh, a co-branded uh, blue OG Griot's Garage version, version of this, say. <clears throat> We're also um, offering extra bottles because some people might want that. And they get this bottle and a cap. Uh, but again, more to come on the foam cannon as I dig into this more. I'll have some dedicated videos on it. So that's the Griot's line. This will make its way into the Obsessed Garage packages. Um, it took quite a bit of it convincing to let me pick and choose from the catalog. Again, my MO is not to be a retailer. Um, I want to be a curator. And so I'm looking for my favorite product. Let's call it what I deem to be the best product at the time. Uh, but my favorite, let's say my favorite product per category. Uh, and so me choosing uh, these happen to be either replacing or being, you know, added to my process. Uh, and I'm excited to be able to offer, you know, my, one of my all-time favorite brands at Obsessed Garage. Uh, I'm probably going to be forced to make things in, under my own name in the future. But generally speaking, I would much prefer to buy, you know, Griot's Garage Fast Correcting Cream from them, not have to try to make my own stuff and not have to worry about bottling it. You know, let's say if I did it myself, I get a, you know, who knows, a 70% margin and I'm going to get a 30% margin on this or something. Um, I'd rather um, go out and spend all of my time focused on finding great products rather than trying to put it in a bottle and making it. Uh, at least that's my current, uh, you know, philosophy at the moment. Uh, and then, you know, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for companies to catch uh, lightning in a bottle. They're catching some specific product and they've either they got lucky, they were genius, uh, whatever. I don't really care. I'm just looking for great things made by great companies and then I'd love to support it and market it and then hopefully be able to be compensated by selling it to you. You can buy these things anywhere. I'd really appreciate it if you bought it from us. Uh, yes, there's a couple of things that I do that's different. One, I charge for shipping uh, because I'm curating these. If I was buying all Griot's Garage products and just retailing it, I would have much better margins. I'd have the ability to mark it down or mark it up more. I can't do that because I'm only buying a few products from them, so I won't get as good of a deal as a big retailer would. Uh, that's, that's one of the reasons why I, have to, uh, I charge for shipping in order to pay to make these videos. And what I'm hoping to do is provide you with, um, with a resource that you know some of you really like and are willing to support so uh, buying this stuff from me is really really helpful um, I will promise you we will probably get it to you better than anybody else can it'll be taped it'll be bubble wrapped it'll be put in a nice box uh, and to, for some of us we, we, we value that's that way of delivery so anyway thanks for your support thanks for watching thanks to Grios Garage for letting me uh, do this finally it's been a long time coming uh, more to come on the foam cannon stuff and all these products we'll see you in the next one